Atelier Sophie, The Alchemist of the Mysterious Book, is a Japanese role-playing game developed by Gust, a company that appears to not fuck around, as this is the 17th major release in the ongoing Atelier series since its debut on the original Sony PlayStation all the way back in 1997. Releasing 17 core titles in 20 years is impressive, and I've got to say, I'm pretty embarrassed that this is my first venture into the adventure that is the Atelier series of games. For those of us who didn't spend any time in France during the Middle Ages, Atelier is actually a French word that means workshop or studio, and so, as the name partially suggests, this game is all about running your very own alchemy studio. The game is set in the small town of Kirchen Bell, you take control of Sophie, a budding young alchemist who dreams of one day being able to synthesize objects and items just as strong and powerful as her recently deceased grandmother to whom the atelier used to belong. At this rate, I'll never be as good as grandma was. Depressingly though, Sophie is a pretty shitty alchemist, barely capable of synthesizing even the simplest of potions. Eventually, you find a 500-year-old talking alchemy book that somehow has remained completely undiscovered despite sitting in plain fucking sight a few meters away from where Sophie spends pretty much the entirety of her life. What? That book is floating? I, I didn't think books could do that. You just got home and you're already so loud. Oh, sorry. Wait, what? Did the book just talk? And now you'd think that alchemy would become pretty simple after this because a talking alchemy book would probably just tell you what to make and how to make it, but it would appear that the book, whose name is Plukta, has a rather severe and convenient case of amnesia. And you guessed it, the only way to get those memories back is to fill that book bitch with alchemy recipes. Herein lies the main premise of the game. There's no catastrophe attempting to end existence. There are no warring nations that you must stop from destroying the world. And there's no hole in the space-time continuum that you must close, preventing reality as we know it from imploding in on itself. There's simply Sophie trying to fill a book full of alchemy recipes so that this book, whose name is Plukta, can regain its memories and eventually its human form. You do this by thinking up alchemy ideas and collecting the ingredients needed to synthesize into items and objects. Thinking up a new recipe idea can be triggered by filling certain requirements, like picking up items, battling enemies, talking to people, or reacting to the environment. Collecting ingredients can be achieved by defeating enemies, finding them laying around on the ground, and synthesizing them from other ingredients. I can't quite pinpoint why, but it's a really relaxing game, and I find the lack of an important overarching narrative to really work in the game's favor. At this point, I think it's important to point out that just because Atelier lacks an engrossing story, you shouldn't be fooled into assuming that the game lacks substance. A clever Tetris-esque crafting system and intriguingly awkward character interactions were more than enough to not only keep me playing, but actively wanting to understand why these characters were speaking to each other in such odd and rather disjointed ways. Oh, Sophie, listen to this. Sir Julio was telling me that I'm too fat. Yeah, he's right. What are you talking about? I've lost a lot of weight since we first met Sir Julio. Can't you tell just by looking? Wait, you have? I didn't notice at all. What? You could put it down to the localization of the game or the fact that I was playing it with English dubbing, but I couldn't shake this feeling that the characters in Atelier Sophie don't really like each other that much at all, and that the conversations were filled with bullshit niceties and the compliments that were there were just fake as hell. The battles are all turn-based and suffer the same problem that most JRPGs tackle when choosing to adopt this type of system. With just a little bit of grinding, the enemies you encounter are just a fucking breeze. Mashing on attack is enough to get you through 99% of battles, and even if you only spend a little bit of extra time in an area to gain a few extra levels, then you'll more or less forever be ahead of the pack and never find any of the fights a real issue. While this makes the game easy, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, because battling beasties is just a mechanism to further facilitate the gathering of ingredients that you'll utilize in your quest to become a totally rad alchemist. The activity of alchemy in Atelier consists of standing in front of your cauldron for extended periods of time, 
selecting ingredients and matching them in a weird Tetris-esque square-based puzzle system that depending on the ingredients chosen and the shapes placed within the puzzle screen produces various items with varying levels of potency, strength and added effects. For instance, if you were looking at synthesizing a few potions to sell down at the local pub, then you'd be looking for the effect that causes shops to buy the item at an increased price. There are modifiers that affect attack power, element resistance, selling price, item gathering, and a whole slew of other cool effects that can greatly alter the utility of the item being created. Another factor to keep in mind when searching fields for ingredients, attempting to track down and kill particular monsters, or finishing time-sensitive quests, is Atelier's night and day cycles. Some ingredients might only be available during certain hours of the day, and some monsters might only spawn during certain days of the month, meaning you might find yourself having to purchase hints and rumors from one of the shopkeepers to better your chances of finding your elusive prey, whatever that may be. Let's not beat around the bush here. Atelier Sophie, the alchemist of the mysterious book, is anime as fuck but it's also a rather intriguing game and pretty different to anything else available on the current generation of consoles. A relaxing and refreshing JRPG that really needs to be played to be properly appreciated. It succeeds in making me wish I had discovered the Atelier series long before now and makes me eager to play more of it in the future. Hey everyone, Matthew here from Ultra Super Mega. If you like what you saw, remember to hit subscribe on the YouTube channel and check us out on the web at all the w's.ultrasupermega.com.au and uh, you can find us on Facebook as well. We've got a Twitter account, all that sort of stuff. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next review.